Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang and Bang. You might have seen the shorter video I did on the intro to tactical shotgun course I took from Frankie McRae at Radon Tactics. In it, I show my progress on just one skill we learned that day. And I think it's pretty clear that Frankie's a good match for my learning style because I made a tremendous amount of progress on that skill in just one day of instruction. Well, this video is the whole enchilada. Frankie gave me an all access pass. He wanted me to videotape absolutely everything he did as well as share it with you. The other students were also really willing to get on camera and I couldn't have this video if all those things didn't come together. When you're watching this video, you're gonna see Frankie McRae's take on using a, a shotgun for home defense. And it's an intro course. None of us look like rock stars. We're gonna be making mistakes the whole time you're watching this. And one of the cool things for me is watching the video, I see things that, oh yeah, I need to be working on keeping things up into my workspace better and stuff like that that you'll see. But the other thing to keep in mind is, as you watch this, I'm the student, not the instructor. So if you have questions or concerns about what was taught, why things were taught the way they were taught, Frankie is the best person to answer that. And his phone number is in the video description below. Give him a call, he'll be happy to talk to you. But in 30 minutes, I've been able to boil down everything we learned that day, as well as show us on the line, putting it to work against steel. And that's what's coming up next on Twang and Bang. Frankie likes to start his classes out in the classroom and 37 PSR and Gun Club has a couple of really good comfortable classrooms to do this. Again, this is about fighting with a shotgun. This is not about shooting skeet or anything like that. This is a tactical shotgun course. All right. As you'd expect, Frankie starts very early with going over the different safety considerations. Reviewing the basic rules of gun safety and making sure everybody understands what's expected in this regard. But then Frankie talked about how those rules can get in the way of training and how there are certain circumstances where breaking some of those rules under controlled conditions leads to better learning. There's nothing wrong with being hypersensitive to safety, okay? But it limits in so many ways um, the, the use of, of the shotgun and other things. In combat, people get flagged all the time. Now, is there needless flagging going on? Oh, absolutely. But the thing is, when we're doing this training, so understand that, all right? So we'll check, double check, triple check, and then we'll check again and make sure that they're unloaded. Another aspect of this course that made it different from others I've taken was that this was pump only. No auto loaders allowed. And Frankie gave his reasons why. Um, I, I think the pump shotgun, even though it takes more work to actually work the action and all that, is less intricate, therefore when you have a malfunction it's not as catastrophic, okay, and it's harder to take it out of battery. Before proceeding with the instruction, Frankie took us all out to the range where he put us through an exercise so he could evaluate our initial skills. The instructions were to put five shots on target as fast as we could with shells that were sitting on the table. The gun was completely unloaded, we had to load it one shell at a time. 12.21 seconds. Somebody's been. The techniques attempted varied from student to student, including this method that was done by a student who had an old motorcycle injury that impeded the use of his left arm. As you can see, it really did not slow him down that much at all. He had a good method figured out before this course started. 15.46. As I mentioned in my earlier video on this course, I hadn't touched a pump shotgun in over 20 years. So I just did my best to copy the fast guys that went before me, and even though it felt awkward, it went okay. Eighteen point seven one. It's a benefit of going last. I wouldn't have known what to do if I didn't watch you guys. <laughs> With the evaluation behind us, we return to the classroom to learn a few different ways of reloading. Pull back, bring it back to my workspace, grab the next round, same way, come over the top, back on target. And again, as I'm moving the gun out on the target, moving that action bar, squeeze again, come back. 
That's a rapid reel. I could do that off a of off the uh, bandolier uh, slings. I could do it out of a box and off the table, whatever. <clears throat> okay. The next way is off the side side saddle here. <clears throat> and there's two ways to do that: over the top or in the bottom. If I go over the top, I set my rounds up so that they're set up to be put in correctly. I grab with my index finger, forefinger, and trap it again between my pinky and my, my index finger and just slam it through the ejection port. It's not gonna go anywhere, okay? Now, some of you guys were doing this before, but as I'm going up, I'm mounting it and leaning forward, exaggerating that lean, pushing the gun out. Pull the trigger, bang, come back, come back. Now, if I want to take over the top, I've got it this way, but I can also come in from the bottom, all right? But if I come in from the bottom, I have to load the round up just a little bit different, okay, in the side saddle. And I don't want to load it so that as I grab it, I'm putting it in backwards this way. I want to grab it so that I'm putting it in the correct way. All right. A common mistake people make is by loading them in the side saddle incorrectly. All right. Bottom down, I grab the same way, but instead of my index finger and my thumb, I grab between my middle finger and my thumb and just rotate it in my hand. And as I'm moving my hand up, I cup it over the top, force it right in the ejection port, and now I'm on target. Make sense? Okay. Come back up on target, pull the trigger like this. Notice I'm always bringing the gun back into my workspace. The reason I do it back into my workspace, because way out here, way down here, okay, I can't find that spot. Because I still got my eyes on target. It may be dark. Okay? And then the last way is the spit it in. Okay? I can hold one in my mouth, and all I'm gonna do is bring the gun back, back on target, put it in there and go. Okay? But the key is to bring it back here into my workspace again, kind of close, spit it in, and then drive the gun back out. That's the three ways we're going to learn today to do rapid reloads, top, bottom, and spit. We're going to learn tactical reload, okay, and then administrative loads. We went back to the range where Frankie went over the fundamentals of stance, shouldering the shotgun, and sighting the shotgun. Bolt on this because the first <clears throat> task we're going to start with is the high ready position, okay? And the high ready position starts here where our hands are up, grabbing the gun about uh, chin level to upper chest level and we're able to see over the top of this over the top of the barrel where we're going we lean forward a little bit more and we grab it back here in the back at right here on the stock where it meets the action <clears throat> now the reason I like Mossbergs is the bolt release is right here all right so right now if I needed to jack around into it my fingers already on I don't have to move my hand up here I can fight with it in this position okay so my non-dominant foot is gonna be up here a little bit forward my weights gonna be a little bit forward and I'm gonna be gripping the ground on my toes okay the first thing I have to do is before I can shoot the gun is mount the gun okay and the way I'm gonna do is push out rotate in bring it right back onto the line of sight and then I'm gonna fire bang pull back recharge fire Okay, so the first task is just mounting the gun and finding those sights on our target, okay? Frankie doesn't typically use dummy guns. He likes people to use their actual firearms so that they're training with what they're going to be fighting with. This means that we did three safety checks, ending with him visually inspecting every shotgun himself. No live ammunition was present on the range at this time. Okay. <clears throat> All right, I've had guns pointed at me before, okay? So if I walk in front of you, we know that the guns are clear. This is nothing but a hunk of metal in our arms right now. All right? I will walk around you. You do not move the gun around me. Okay? Does that make sense? Right. You are here to learn. Okay? So we have the, the gun here at about eye level, and the, the um, stock is on the inside of our elbow here. All right? So as we push out, the gun comes straight out like this. We rotate up. We pull it into our shoulder nice and tight, and we should be in our shooting position. Okay, remember, we got to have that weight forward just a little bit so we're on target. Okay. Ready? Frankie likes to keep his classes Go. small because he wants to give everybody one on one attention throughout the course. He did this time and time again, walked up and down the line, made sure everybody did the skill the way he was expecting them to be able to do it, and took as much time as each student needed to make sure that they got it right. Ready, go. Are you 
you on target where you uh, need to be? I got a camera in the way, but generally they're lined up. At this point, the class got very different than what I was expecting. He taught us how to fight with the shotgun as a weapon in and of itself, not as a firearm. And this is where he talked about why we need to be able to do that. That's right. This is not competitive shotgun. This is tactical no, no. shotgun. But let's look at why we would have possibly have a no-shoot situation. Okay? If someone's breaking into your home... And he doesn't have a firearm. Okay? And all they have is the TV. Is it really worth killing the guy over? No. Probably not. Okay? Not the legal fees. Exactly. Absolutely right. Okay? But if the guy doesn't leave... Uh, okay, the guy doesn't leave and he drops the TV and comes at us. You can convince him. Here in, Nor in the great state of North Carolina, you put canoe his f***ing head and guess what? The corner comes, the DA looks at it and goes, yep, that was self-defense. Mm -hmm. Okay, this technique is for whenever it's either too close to get a shot on, we parry away or we downstroke, we get back, okay, or we just go ahead and finish them off there, or we're out of ammo, okay or we're unable to get it loaded fast enough for whatever reason. Catastrophic failure. Catastrophic failure. It's nothing but metal and wood. That's whenever, if it's too close to get a shot off or we're not able to be loaded or we had a catastrophic uh, malfunction, we can still use it with lethality to defend ourselves and others. All right? I had a lot of fun with this part of the course. I spent many years training in martial arts using weapons of different kinds, so I felt right at home doing this part of the course. Of course, it's been a while. <laughs> I was a little rusty, but as serious as this was, this still was a lot of fun for me. What was really cool is that we then got to put this to use on the body opponent bag. Remember that every one of these shotguns has been cleared three times and visually inspected by Frankie himself. These things are hunks of metal and wood, just as he said. There you go. All right. So, downward stroke, pull back, forward thrust, butt stroke, side stroke. There you go. All right, so you're going to begin with a downward stroke. Go ahead. Boom, forward thrust, butt stroke, and side butt stroke. There you go. All right, you ready? All right, ready, go! There you go, good. There you go. Good. Frankie went through the different ways we might have our shotgun set up for home defense and how that was going to impact the rest of what we were going to learn in the course. I prefer to keep my shotgun magazine loaded, but the chamber empty. And then the side side is four. All right, so that gives me four plus nine. All right, in the, in the typical home defense situation, I, I probably don't need more than that. But if I do, if you can load a bag or something like that that's hanging where the shotgun is and throw that around your neck, when you grab the shotgun, you've got that extra stuff. Okay, but let's just operate out of the magazine, the tube magazine, all right, and the side saddle. <clears throat> so we're going to practice dry a few times the rapid reloads going over the top and under the bottom. Before going to live rounds on steel, Frankie had us practicing the skills using dummy rounds. Once again, it gave him the chance to go up and down the line, working with everybody one-on-one -on -one to make sure that each of our individual problems were solved. Come right along here across the top, okay. pick it up, grab it just like that. Less motion, right into there, okay? Okay. Shoot it. ready? Shoot ready. From the high ready. Now what got you on that second one? You didn't? I couldn't get it out of the so, thing. And you, you got it out, but then how are you holding it? Like in your, like in your fingertips yeah. or back here. I'll hold hold it between here. those fingers, okay? Yep. Alright, on that one, you're you're grabbing it, but you're fingering it this way. Yeah. Don't finger it that way. Attempt to grab it like this, okay? Or in this hand here, coming across. Because when you rotate this way, 
Yeah, because I had to kind of That's let right. go of it. Hold it in the, in, the, it in, in your fingers, flat. Okay, so go ahead. He's like, I got it. Okay. There you go. You're husking me to death. Right, pick it up, do it again. It makes a big difference. Here you can see how fast I improved with his instruction. He gave me just the pointers that I needed in order to get this skill down pretty well in a very short period of time. All right, so as I come out, I'm on target, I pull the trigger, I jack it back, I bring it back to here. What I'm doing is looking inside that ejection port, number one, to get good positive placement, for that round to go in, but I'm also checking the condition of my weapon. Mm -hmm. I'm empty. Yeah, Could you know a what I mean. Number of reasons why they went. Actually, you went click, or you may have. Been I went right. bang, but I know I'm, I'm okay. empty. But yes, this could have been a click too. This could have been a click, yeah. Okay, so I'm doing a good positive check, and then I run it back out. Bang, come back out. Now I know I'm empty. Come back, put it on. Now I don't have to bring it way back here. Okay. Right here, I get a good. Look down into that port, come back out on top, pull it and go. Frankie also taught us how to load from the bottom, which wasn't his preferred way, and I think most of the people at the class decided this wasn't their preferred way either. But it was still good to learn an alternate way of loading and try it out so we could see for ourselves which worked best. I think the advantage is in the over the top. It's less motion, okay? It's a lot less motion. But there's people out there that want to feed from the bottom but you can see more when you feed the top. i i i agree i agree you're right. in the bottom everything's you're, beyond your eyesight that's right, right. and it's at, technically out of technically out of your um workspace okay that's why i prefer over the top but i'm going to show you all ways to do it okay so when we're going under the bottom again bolt is locked to the rear grab it and if you ever mess it up, go back over the top. <laughs> All right. So we'll set this up for bottom yeah. feed. Okay. So as I come back, I'm just going to grab it right here, put it under, and back over the top. Back here. And the thing is, when you grab here, you're going to kind of fumble it. You've got to turn your hand up and back over the top. Okay. Frankie also took some time to go over some of the common form errors he was seeing us all doing, and he took the time to explain and show us why it was important to correct them. But if I hold it like this, no matter where I am in any sequence, watch out, Pat. I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay. No matter where I am in any sequence, if something happens and there's a no shoot, or will you sit this down over this There's a no shoot, or I get hemmed up, now all I got to do is boom this way. But if I'm in this mode here, what I can't do anything with it. I have to bring my hand back. And so whatever I'm doing here, I now have to drop, put the hand back. But if I never take that hand off, I have a positive hold on the gun. You can even just go. And if somebody tries to take the gun, guess what? Drive it forward just like this. I was gonna ask you about that earlier when we were doing the basically like an axe cut. Yeah. We didn't really you didn't say anything about changing your grip, but just then you rolled your hand on top to get that forward. Yeah, because wherever I'm if I'm here, boom, I take it straight down. I'm good to go with that. But when I take this hand off and now I'm holding it in the middle of the stick, a heavy stick, how effective is that? Check this out. It's even more detrimental because somebody grabbed the butt stock or just I push did that it back and just smack you with it this way. That's, right. That's why we never take this hand off the gun. Can you hit me in the head with this right now? Try it. Oh, you would. Try if, it. If I you, would, you could smack me with your Oh, head. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All I got to do is bring the head up or move it around this way. But in this way right here, I've got to move my hand to something that's moving on the fulcrum. Okay? That's the guy who asked if he's going to learn anything with the shotgun. Yep. So you guys see the difference. That's why I don't like the competition way is to hold it down like this and feed from the right hand. For competition, again, that's a great technique for getting it loaded. Yeah. Okay? Again, you're not in a fight. It's a competition. You know, UFC, how many people die in UFC matches every year? Zero. That's right. You know what? You can't kick them in the nuts. You can't gouge out, gouge out their eyes. You can't bite them. So it's a game. Okay? This is, we're talking about tactical shotgun. We're fighting 
for our life. So we need to have positive control all the time this way. So now we're going to talk about tactical reloading. Okay? Tactical reloading is conducted when the time and cover permit. I finished the engagement, I'm behind cover, the shooting situation is over. I don't have to rapidly reload, I got one chambered, so now I can feed off of my side saddle. So all I'm gonna do is take the gun just like this, rotate it in my workspace, and feed them under with my thumb. Simple as that. That's tactical reload. And when is it conducted? Time and cover permit. The next thing we learn is just going to be easier for you to watch than for me to try to explain. So it's as simple as this. Bring it back to my work space, look into it, spit and blow, and as I'm pulling back out, put it on target. All right? I learned that in Bangkok, Thailand, by the way. All right? No. So I come back and take it back forward, okay? On target. Now, you're not going to get it 100% of the time. And we proved that you're not gonna get it 100% of the time. And as you might expect, much hilarity ensued, but you're just gonna have to wait to the end to see some of it. Oh, way to go, man. Look at that far in touch of the Back to your workspace, there you go. Now, you, you are fighting the stock up here in your chest, right? The key is to bring it back here. See how much closer I can get it? All right, right cause I was trying to lean over That's it. That's what you're trying to do like this. Don't do that. That looks like you're enjoying that little bit. You're the tea party. There we perfect. go. Perfect, perfect, yeah. perfect. <laughs> All right, so, multiple target engagements. All right, we're going to show you a simple little example and then we'll take it to the, to the gun. But if I've got a bunch of targets in front of me and I look through my sights to find the target, I've got to line this up and find that center of mass place, okay? And that's really hard to do. So what I need to do is look at my target first, okay? Mount the gun on target because my eyes are already there. As I'm coming around i look at the next target so i'm going to look at his button all right bring the gun over here on the target pull the trigger racket boom look over here and look there's a nice little steelers thing right there yeah, center, center mass all right <clears throat> all right so i'm gonna go one look here look there look there look there look there look there and look there okay does that make sense my mm -hmm. eyes are going ahead of the gun Okay, every time I come on target, I find it. Why? My sights are moving into my vision, not my vision moving through my sights. What you're gonna do is, is basically double up on steel. There's enough here that everybody should be able to engage two targets. All right, you're gonna bring the gun up from the high ready, you're gonna mount the gun, bang, shoot, rack, look, bang, shoot, rack, come back to the high ready. Okay, then we're gonna go back out again, bang, 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 okay? We're going to practice that a couple of times. All right, you killed them. Get ready. Watch the angle. Don't go too far over. When we're not shooting, we're reloading. It was a really important habit he tried to enforce. At the end of the day, we put it all to test in a head-to-head -head competition against the steel. With five targets, you had to start with an empty chamber, have four in the tube, and one in the side saddle. So you had to load one by hand. Because it was a single elimination competition, that added a little bit extra stress while we put what we learned that day to practice. Stand by. As I said in the first video about this, I didn't hit the popper solidly enough to knock it over, but it gave me a chance to practice that over the top reload under even more stress. Then we went into reloading. 
Before we did the final shooting exercise, Frankie took the time to review what we learned that day to make sure we didn't have any leftover questions. Then we came outside and we went over a little bit practically um, with live ammo, the stance, the grip, how to use the inertia of the gun to drive the gun back, get that bolt release, and then get it back forward and uh, stay on target using follow through. Then we did a little bit of shooting. And let me ask you this, <clears throat> all right? In the shooting phase, are you guys able to more clearly see the gun through the firing cycle than before? All right, do you understand what I mean about following the shot through the sights now? Mm -hmm. just the, not only because the weapon is more stable, it's just because you're more aware too. Absolutely, yeah. it should be more stable, but again, because you're more aware of what's going on. All right, um, hopefully we fixed most everyone's major problems. I challenge you guys though to go stop by the store on the way home pick up some dummy rounds and go and practice with those dummy rounds, okay? Anytime you get a new piece of kit, you got to try it out, all right? And the best way to do that with a shotgun is shooting those dummy rounds, all right? So any questions about the day? Did anybody have any particular problems at any point in time? Just the underloading, but that, that's <coughs> simple practice and yeah. working that. I don't really like it. No, I, I just, like the way it works. But, but, but the thing that one thing that did come clearer was using inertia of the gun to actually in a pump together, yeah, right? Because it was a little bit different when we were doing it before. But using this way, I was able to shoot faster, but you know, more consistent. Yeah, and more controlled. Yeah, I more think. controlled for sure. You know, if you if you understand how to use that inertia and let it come back and then driving it back forward, it sets you right back up where you started. All right. Mm -hmm. um, loading or unloading the shotgun. You know, that's your choice at, at your home. Okay, I totally recommend that if you're going to have a shotgun loaded, that the chamber be empty. Okay, rounds can be in the magazine and definitely on the, on the side saddle, but keep that chamber empty. And so that's one of the reasons why today, the first thing, on target, rack the slide and, and pull the trigger and, and rack it again because that's how most people are going to have it in their home. And again, in the middle of the night, do you have on full kit, bandoliers and all that? No. So what you have on the gun is what you have, but at the same time, we want to keep it as safe as possible. All right. Keeping so why that, do you recommend doing that? Is it a floating firing pin or what? Well, did I miss that part? Just keeping the chamber empty, so if anybody else grabs it, oh. you, you know what I mean. Yeah. <coughs> and it, yeah. yeah. Kids and and for us, it's easy to just put it on the target, pull it, ching ching, and then go to town with it. Okay. And you notice that the gun's not moving off target now as it was before. I saw a lot of you guys were pulling back, and the gun's basically coming up here and then going back on target. Well. It shouldn't be doing that now, right? That thing's staying on target as you're able to work that action all the way through the, through the cycle, okay? So now we're gonna do <clears throat> a repeat of what we started out with. I want you to have five rounds. You can, you can put them on the table or you can load them from the side saddle. We're gonna videotape you and time you and then we're gonna compare the two when we get back in class. All right, so take this table and set it right out there. Repeating the exercise we started with at the beginning of the class was a really cool way of objectively seeing just how much improvement we made from one day of class and practicing what we learned. And as you might be able to tell, I'm not the only one videoing this. Frankie also videoed everyone. And we went back to the classroom to compare the videos from the beginning of the class to the videos taken at the end of class. It gave each of us a chance to get feedback from the entire class, giving us multiple perspectives on what we might do to continue to improve our skills. 10.30. Woo! Oh, that's what they got. Got slower. 10.08. Awesome. If you've ever taken a class like this, you know how much the other students can influence how much you get out of a class. And I really appreciate the guys that showed up. They were squared away when they got there. They all let me get them on video and a lot of them stepped behind the camera when I needed them to so I could get out on camera and also I could do stuff to take the class. And I really appreciate their help. I really appreciate what they contributed to my learning. I hope this video has contributed to your learning about the shotgun, whether you have already trained with the shotgun for home defense or not. I know, like I said, this was new for me. Uh, you know, for, for me, the shotgun was about pointing it and pulling the trigger. Well, I learned a whole lot more about the shotgun than, than that for home defense. As I said in the beginning, if you have any questions about this video, of what, what you saw in it, uh, comments, concerns, feel free to leave them. But I'm going to let you contact Frankie McRae directly to get answers to a lot of them. 
and his contact information and credentials are in the video description below. If you like this video, please take the time to log into YouTube and click the like button. Now more than ever, YouTube needs to know that you like firearms-oriented programming. Be sure to click right here to subscribe so you can see my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool stuff like instruction from Radon Tactics. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang, and I hope to see you next time. Sick. Give it a chin bump, baby. <laughs> Give it a bump. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah. Bump it. Take a look.